Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and before we get into this episode, I wanted to do a little PSA and remind you that I put out multiple shows a week of Old Time Radio Westerns. You can check them out by going to otrwesterns.com or looking up OTR Westerns on your podcast application of choice. We are releasing over 10 episodes a week so far, about 100 a month. So definitely want you to check that out. Again, otrwesterns.com and check it out. I also wanted to invite you to check out my sister podcast site, OT Netcast, and that's N-E-T-C-A-S-T. So O-T N-E-T-C-A-S-T, Netcast, otnetcast.com. We're currently releasing mystery genre shows, and this is shows like The Shadow, Escape, Suspense, and The Whistler. And we have plans on bringing other shows to the network for you guys to listen to. So it's my non-Western old-time radio channel that I can kind of do other genres that not only I like, but hopefully you would like too. You can check us out by going to otnetcast.com or searching O-T-N-E-T-C-A-S-T on your podcast app of choice. Now let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be The Lone Ranger. Original air date is December 7th, 1945, and the title is Imperfect Crime. His faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver! Let's go, big fellow! Oh, Silver! Oh! The fall roundup was just about over, and from 75 miles around, from the Lodge Pole Mountains clear down to Ramsey's Mills on the Snake River, the folks were heading toward the town of Harrison, heading for the big jamboree. There would be music and dancing, old friendships renewed and new ones begun. In the small white house just beyond the courthouse square in Harrison, Molly Andrews was getting her new outfit ready for the dance that night, and at the same time, trying to listen respectfully to the words of Mother Andrews, words that she'd heard many times before, words that Molly did not entirely agree with. 
You take my advice, young lady, and forget that Tommy Farrell. Oh, Mother, please don't. No, Mother, please. Oh, Mother, please. You're nothing but a child. Not even old enough to know what's good for you. Haven't you sense enough to realize when someone's trying to, to do something for you? You won't even listen to your own mother. But, Mother, Tommy asked me three weeks ago to go to the dance. <laughs> Todd Chase asked you, too. Don't forget that. He's a nice young man. Asked you right in front of me, he did. I'm sure Todd knows whose side you're on. Don't you see? I'd rather go to the dance with Tommy. Oh, a gambler. Irresponsible, treacherous, deceitful, making his living, if you can call it a living, dealing cards. All right, Mother. Let's not talk about it anymore. Then you will go to the dance with Todd Chase. Oh, stop it. I won't go to the dance at all if I can't go with the man I want to go with. I'll... Uh, Howdy. Hmm? Oh. Hello, Tommy. Nosy thing. Standing right there, bold as brass, listening to every word. Just what have you got against me, Mrs. Andrews? You're a professional gambler. You folks never knew my father. He was a gambling man. And, well, I guess the reason I deal cards is because it's about all I know how to do. A poor excuse, young man. If you had any gumption about you, you'd find something else. And you'd find something to offer a girl besides lonely evenings, waiting for a gambler to come home. Mm. Sure you don't want to go to the dance, Molly? Tommy, I, I think I... She's already told you, young man. Now, please don't force me to be rude with you. <laughs> I can imagine how much forcing it would take. Well, why, of all the impertinence... Never mind, never mind. I'm going. Tommy! Adios. Tommy, wait. Wait, Tommy, I didn't... Be... <laughs> oh. <laughs> There, there, now, don't start that. Not over that worthless young rascal. He, he wouldn't even listen to so me. So much the better. Now, here, let me help you get ready, because I got a notion Todd Chase will be here any minute now. You will go with Todd, won't you? Just to please me. Oh, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> Nice-looking young couple, aren't you? Hey, you mean Molly and young Chase? Well, leastwise, that's what Molly's ma seems to think. You can just see her beaming all over when they dance together. Mm. I hear she put the kibosh on Tommy Farrell proper. Well, I can't say I blame her a whole lot. I like Tommy all right myself, but still, he's a gambling man. And none too prosperous at that. Yeah, and Todd Chase owns a freight line, building up a good business. I reckon Molly's ma figures him a good prospect. Ain't seen Tommy around here tonight, have you? <laughs> After the call down she gave him, it ain't no wonder. From what I hear, the old gal really <laughs> blistered him. Told him he wasn't nothing but a tin horn. Didn't have no gumption. <laughs> she practically shoved him out of the door and told him to stay out. Shh, hold it, here she comes. Evening, Miss Andrews. Oh, evening. Oh, you, Molly, uh, Todd, here I am over here. Well, we're looking all over for you, Mother Andrews. Say, don't you look nice tonight. Oh, now, Todd. Well, by golly, if you and Molly was to stand side by side, I bet you folks would think you were sisters. Oh, you rascals. Uh, are you both having a good time? Uh, I couldn't be better, huh, Molly? It's very nice. Oh, say, if you folks will excuse me, I'm going outside for a minute. Just to have a smoke with the boys. Do you mind? No, no, of course not. You go right in. I'll be right back. <sighs> Molly, you know what Todd was telling me this afternoon? He's got a brand new contract to haul supplies for the railroad. Isn't that wonderful? He was telling me about it while we danced. And did he tell you that the railroad people advanced him $4,000 to buy new equipment with? Yes, Mother, he told me. <laughs> Well, aren't you thrilled? Don't you realize that one of these days Todd Chase is going to be a big businessman? I suppose he will, Mother. I know he will. You mark my word, that young man's going places. Well, land's sake, how many young girls that jump at the chance to... Oh, hello, Todd. Hi. Well, looks like I'm just in time to claim the next dance. And not a moment too soon, I'd say. Sounds like they might be getting ready for a good old hoedown. Good heavens, what was that? Sounds like the boys are going to celebrate this jamboree, huh? Sounded like an explosion. Sounds like a... Outside here, Trollo! 
The express office has been blasted apart. The express office? It's an explosion. I'll see you later. I gotta go. A few miles west of town, where the cattle trail veered close to the Colorado, a man sat motionless by the riverbank, watching the pale brilliance of moonlight on water. Suddenly, at the sound of approaching hoofbeats, the man was alert, and a moment later, he'd slipped quietly into the shadows. From his place of concealment, he watched the great white stallion trotting easily up the trail, and then as the horseman rode into a patch of bright moonlight, Tommy Farrell saw the black mask on the man's face, and then... You, mister! Rain up. Oh, Silver. Oh, boy. Easy. Get off that horse. Be careful how you do it. All right. Steady, big fella. Now what? Unbuckle those gun belts. Let them drop. Then you can explain who you are, what you've been up to, and what you're wearing a mask for. You know, my friend, you can get into more trouble for an armed holdup on the trail than I can for wearing a mask. Yeah? Well, I'm giving you just three seconds to shuck those guns. And then you can shuck the mask. Won't take that long, mister. Hey, what? Sorry, but when shooting seemed necessary, I like to be first. That proves it. No one but a law-breaking owl hooter could shoot like that. Or someone interested in keeping the law. Uh, you going to tell me that's you? I'm not telling you anything just now. You made the gun play and lost. I think you'd better explain. Who are you? The name is Tommy Farrell. Number one tin horn from the town of Harrison. Irresponsible, treacherous, practically penniless... No gumption at all. <laughs> Say, who gave you that pedigree? You want the whole story, huh? Well, I've time enough to listen, and you might feel better. Oh, sure. So now you think I want to cry on your shoulder. Well, I'm not made that way, fella. Neither was your dad, Tommy. My dad? Yes, Joe Farrell. Gambler who operated throughout the Oklahoma Territory, right? What? Well, how did... I knew your dad pretty well, Tommy. He was a good friend. My father never had no truck with outlaws. That's true. I don't see... You don't like to be called irresponsible and treacherous because you happen to be a gambler. Well... So uh, why call me an outlaw before you have better evidence? Wait. Let me think a minute. You say you knew my father. Then you knew he was dead. Yes, I was with him the night he died, Tommy. Six years ago. And the man who shot him? He's still in prison for murder. Sure he is. And you're the fellow that put him there. You done that. And you're the Lone Ranger. Well, Tommy, how about telling an old friend your troubles? Why, well, I'll tell you part of them. Just a small part of that. The rest, well, I reckon they won't never be told. Such yourself, fellow. I'll tell you about Molly. She's pretty wonderful. And I'll tell you about her mother, who thinks the best qualities in a man start with the size of his bankroll. Someday I'd like to show her a barrel of money. Maybe then she'd think Tommy Farrell was just a man for her daughter. being a gambler. In fact, I've been planning for a long time to get into a certain kind of business. What sort of business, Tommy? Well, someday, this will be a great country. It'll be more than raising beef, more than digging gold. It'll be the richest country in the world. There'll be a million farms this side of the Mississippi. And the farmers are going to need tools to work their trade. All kinds of tools. You have a great idea, Tommy. I'm hoping you stick to it. It'll take plenty of money to set myself up as a dealer in farm implements. Maybe someday I'll have enough. Well worth trying for. Well, I've got to get on to my camp. Yeah, and I'd better be getting back to town. Steady, big fella. Easy a minute. Good luck to you, Tommy. Well, anyway, I feel better for talking to you. Oh, now? I'll see you again, maybe. Maybe. If not, adios. Hasta la vista. Get it. Come on, Silver. The mask rider's friend, Tonto, was not in camp. It was nearly midnight when the Indian arrived. A moment later, he was relating what had happened in the town of Harrison. Everyone go to big dance. Much noise, plenty music. Then, pretty soon, big explosion. Fellas find express office man dead. Big safe and pieces, money, all gone. Whoever planned that robbery knew that the whole town would be attending the harvest dance. But robber fellow not very smart, Kimasabi. Sheriff catch him already. Well, how? With everyone at the dance, he certainly had time to get away. Oh, him get away, and then come back. Then Sheriff catch him. 
Fellas say him not robber, but share a fine part of express money in saddlebag. The rest probably hidden away somewhere in the hills. Who was the robber, Tonto? Or should I say killer, since the express man was murdered? A young gambler feller named Tommy Farrell. Him not go to dance tonight. He wasn't there. Oh. I'll tell you just part, mister. The rest will never be told. Someday I'd like to show her a barrel of money. Maybe then she'd think I was good enough for her daughter. It's going to take a pile of money, but maybe someday I'll have enough. Otto, what time was the express office blasted open? Maybe two hours ago. Why you ask, Kimasabi? A very good reason. Come on, we're riding to Harrison right now. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to continue our story. The people gathered in the town of Harrison were in an ugly mood. For many months, they'd worked hard looking forward to a good time with the Harvest Jubilee. And now the celebration had been spoiled for them. Without exception, they blamed Tommy Farrell. Oh, and me come 60 miles on horseback to have a good time. This no good murder and tin horn spoils it for us. Hey, Sheriff, what are you waiting for? Confession? Didn't you find some of the loot in his saddlebags? Sure. Wasn't he the only fellow in town didn't come to the dance tonight? He was too busy murdering and stealing. That's why he didn't come to the dance. Let's get a rope and we'll let Mr. Farrell put on a dance all by himself. Stop it, let me through. The reason Tommy didn't go to the dance was because I refused to go with him. That ain't no excuse for murder. Somebody get a rope. Uh, you oh, fellas, get that rope idea out of your heads. This Jasper's a prisoner. He's going to stay in the jailhouse. Oh, no, he ain't. Now oh, you heist your hands, Sheriff. That's the way. We'll take care of Mr. Tommy Farrell. You get them hands up. Stop them. Please, somebody. You... Sheriff, you've got to stop them. You stay back out of the way, miss. <laughs> Only thing anybody can stop now is a bullet. Keep the sheriff covered, Slim. I got him. Rest of you get that tin horn. I'm warning you, please. We ain't in no mood to listen, Sheriff. Now shut up. Take him in the jailhouse and lock him up, boys. Then get your horses and meet us by the river. Some real nice cottonwoods down there. Oh, please. Somebody stop them. Todd, why don't you try to stop them? Why, Molly, darling, how could I stop them? Don't call me darling. You coward. But, but Molly, I can't interfere with justice. A few moments later, the darkness had swallowed the group of determined horsemen who followed the rocky trail to the riverbank. And then, from the opposite direction of town. Now what? Somebody hurrying so as not to miss the party, I suppose. Oh, Mother, how can you speak that way? How can now you believe you it? stop that sniveling, you hear me? I believe what's in front of me. And when I see two and two, I believe it makes four. Oh, 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 oh. You boys better hit the trail or you'll be late for the... Ain't the masked man. What's happened here? Don't you tell him, Molly. Chances are that Tommy Farrell's friends come to rescue him. Rescue Tommy Farrell? From what? The mob. They're taking him away from the Molly sheriff. Andrews, you shut your mouth. Hurry, oh, please hurry if you are his friend. The river trail. Let's go, Tonto. Get off the swamp, too. The fading moon disappeared slowly behind a great cloud in the sky. 
And as the men by the riverbank went ahead with preparations for their grim task, they heard the thunder of approaching hoofbeats. They're sure cutting the breeze, whoever it is. Yeah, they better hurry if they want to see this party. All set, you fellas? Yeah, I'm all right. As soon as I get this noose fixed. Well, hurry it up. You fell. You gonna speak up? There's nothing I could say that any of you would believe. One silver. Cut that rope, fellow. Look out, they're gonna ride us down. They're trying to rescue. Let them have it. Oh, no, you don't, Mr. Let's go. One silver. Hang on, Tommy, and ride. My hands tied in back. Hello. Oh. Hello, he's been shot. Let me keep him in the saddle. Uh, go ahead. Don't bother with me. Don't quit now, Tommy. We're out of gun range. Hang on. He's fainted, Tonto. Pull him in the saddle. I'll guide his horse. Uh, me hold him. One silver. In the Lone Ranger's well-hidden camp, the masked man and his friend Tonto had listened to the jumble of words that poured feverishly from the lips of the wounded man. Then the Lone Ranger sent for Molly. He's asleep now. But will he... Is he going to be all right? I... I don't know, Miss Andrews. You can only wait and see. Why did you and your friend risk your lives to save him last night? Because there are only three men in this world who know that Tommy Farrell is innocent. He'd know it himself. And you? Yes. That's what made the risk so necessary. And the third man? He's the one who committed the robbery and the murder. And I'm going after now. Toto, you stay with Miss Molly. And Tommy regains consciousness, get him on a horse and head for town. Ah, me take care of young fella. Right. Here, Silver. Good. Uh, better not say anything to Tommy about where I've gone or why. I won't. Silver, big fella. I won't, Silver. Sheriff Joe Grayson arrived at his office that morning. The veteran lawman was still chafing at the indignity of having spent the night locked in his own jail. There's going to be some changes made around here, doggone it. Yes, sir. Now on, I'm going to give orders and see to it today. Where in places you come from? What camp up in the hills, Sheriff? I've been waiting for you. Wearing a mask. Some of them fellas in the lynch party last night said you was wearing a mask. Some said you wasn't. It was rather dark. And they didn't have long to make sure. Yeah, yeah, that's what I heard. The way some of them blabbered when they got back here, but he'd think he was nine feet tall and shooting a Gatlin gun from each hand. What about young Fowl? Where is he? My camp. He was pretty badly wounded getting away from that lynch mob. Yeah. How come you pulled him out of the fire? You partners with him or something? I'll be his partner until he's able to stand on his own feet. Meanwhile, I need your help in trapping the killer who blasted the express office. Meaning Tommy didn't do that, eh? Todd Chase was responsible for that. Who? Oh, no. No, sir. You're wrong there. I checked up on him along with everybody else. Chase was the dance hall when it happened. He ain't likely to prove nothing on him. You'll do one thing, Sheriff. I think he'll prove his own guilt in the matter. Well, maybe he will. Maybe I won't. What is it? Well, howdy, Sheriff. Did you have a good night's rest? <laughs> All right, never mind, never mind. Well, just forget the whole thing. You mean you ain't sort us for what we done? Well, I ain't gonna let it slip my memory if that's what you mean. But uh, I got good news, boys. Good news. Yeah, well, what is it? You mean you caught Tom Farrell? Nope. I got a telegraph this morning from the United States Marshal of Abilene. Seems he's heading this way, looking for an escaped federal prisoner. Escape. Uh, Doggone well, telegram was delayed three days somewhere along the line, according to the date on it. So I figure maybe he'll get here sometime today. And then. Maybe he might help us locate the killer we're after, see him? Now, you fellas, you stick around town today. Might be needing a posse, you hear? Yeah, I can. Never 
seen a man turn colors so quick I'm alive. Thought for a minute he was going to fade away. <clears throat> well, what do we do now? Wait right here in your office and watch the street. You'll be coming out of the hotel very shortly. You'll be ready for a long, fast journey. You'll probably head right for the livery stable. Let... Here he comes. Let's go. Hey there. You, Todd. Wait up a minute. Oh, what? Oh, well, uh, what's on your mind, Sheriff? Who's your outlaw friend? Yeah, I can't rightly say, Todd. Mighty peculiar fella. Yeah, I've got a mask on. Right? Never mind the mask, you gents. Just pay attention to what the fellow that's wearing it has got to say. I know who he is. He's the one got Tommy Farrell away from us last night. Uh-huh, he done that all right. This morning when I come to the office, he was waiting for me. And uh, you know what he tried to tell me? Well, tried to tell me that Tommy didn't have nothing to do with that affair at the express office. Tried to tell me that Todd Chase here had done the whole thing. Well, oh, hey. well, let me tell you, Mr. Masked Man, I got a hundred witnesses that I was at the dance hall last night when that explosion took place. Oh, yes, I know you have, killer. Where were you when that man in the express office was murdered? Where well, was... Take a look at these saddlebags, Sheriff. You'll find the bulk of the stolen money. Oh, no, you don't. You ain't got no right to search me. That is, you got... Uh, not without a search warrant. You're getting downright comical, Todd. <coughs> now, you take a good look at this six you there. That's my extra special emergency search warrant. Now, uh, going to hand over them? I'll there? hand them over right in your face, you fat fool! Hey, 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 now, you want gunplay? Hey, I'll give you gunplay. Hey, Good day, hey, killer. Hey, no! Hey, Wait hey, out hey, your hey, string hey, and lost. Hey, and this! No, wait, wait! I've been waiting for just this moment! No! Hey, uh, take a look at these saddlebags, you gents. Hey, look at the money. Hey, that's sure. Uh, you would have never known the difference if it hadn't been for the masked man here. Hey, that was pretty slick. You start in that rumor about the United States Marshal coming here, hunting for an escaped prisoner. Oh, no happened, Sheriff. That was not entirely a rumor. The Marshal will be on his way as soon as you let him know that you have Todd Farrell in custody. Hey, uh, you mean Todd Chase? I mean Todd Farrell. Tommy's brother. But, uh, how in places? I tell you, I seen him at the dance when that express office was being blasted. Yes, Molly Andrews saw him. Everyone saw him there. What none of you did see was what happened before the dance. Eh? Yeah? Bragged about a new freight contract with the railroad. That they'd given him a $4,000 advance to buy equipment. I heard about that. There never was a contract. Todd got that cash from his brother Tommy. What? Yes. Tommy had saved it to start a respectable business for himself. When he saw Todd here in town, he thought that Todd had stolen some money. He didn't know that he'd escaped from a federal prison where he'd been held for murder. Tommy thought that Todd would go back where he came from and return the money he'd stolen. That's why he gave him the $4,000. That's why he kept still about Todd Chase. Great day. Tommy may be dead at this very minute. He's not dead, and he's not going to die. The Indian and I got him to my house. The doctor's there now and says he'll get well again. Well, that sure is good news, Molly. But, Jay, how'd you manage to be in two places at the same time, Todd? That's the mask man. He's so smart. Well, I'd say you went to the office at closing time, got the agent some money, and asked him to hold it in his safe. When he opened the vault, you killed him. And you cleaned out the vault, placed a charge of blasting powder with a long, slow-burning fuse that extended out the window to the alley. Then during the dance, you lit the fuse. Blow it up after you got back inside the dance hall. That's how you done it? Yes, that's how I done it, you fathead. You planted some of the stolen cash in Tommy's saddlebags. <laughs> but how'd the masked man happen to suspect you? Well, I can answer that, Sheriff. Yeah? The Lone Ranger knew Tommy's father years ago, up in Oklahoma Territory... He told me about it. Did, eh? He learned later about Todd Farrell escaping from prison. And last night when Tommy was delirious, he said things. Uh, and you just said something. You spoke of the Lone Ranger. Well, yes, I thought you knew. <laughs> nope, never even suspected. <laughs> but it sure is funny. Todd trying to outsmart the Lone Ranger, then having the nerve to call me a fathead.
The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.